Welcome everyone to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Phil Spicer. This week, we explore the mighty St. Mary's Rapids in Sault Ste. Marie throughout the entire season. First, we join Brad Hodkinson for some exciting steelhead action in the month of May. Then, we join up with John Giuliani for some outstanding Atlantic salmon fishing in August. And finally, we enjoy non-stop pink salmon action in September with one of my fishing buddies, John Babulik. This will give you a taste of the outstanding and affordable fishing the St. Mary's Rapids in Algoma country has to offer. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Algoma Country, That Real. Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Islander Precision Reels. Scientific Anglers. Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing. Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net. People always ask me in my travels, where is the best place to fish on a budget? The answer I give always is the St. Mary's Rapids in Sault Ste. Marie. I then always quote the famous writer, Ernest Hemingway, as he stated in 1920, at the present time, the best fishing in the world is in the rapids of the Canadian Sioux. This statement still has merit to this day, as the rapids of the St. Mary's are truly a fly fisher's mecca. This is a unique and almost perfect fishery. Species available in the rapids are steelhead, Atlantic salmon, pink salmon, Chinook salmon, brown trout, resident brook trout and coaster brook trout, and even whitefish. It's mid-May and my favorite time of year to fish as the steelhead are running. I join up with guide Brad Hodkinson, owner of Sioux North Fly Shop, to fish for these hard tackle testing fighters. It's really colored, eh? Now, this is exactly where Brad told me the fish was. Holding at the top of the pool. And I placed the, the fly high enough up that uh, it got down in time. It's not very big. Oh, nice four pounder. Yep. You got her there, buddy? There we go, There Bill. we go. Let me get my, my tailing glove out here. Okay. Pop it out there. Okay. Yep. Let me go. Now, it's a good start. I've been here five minutes. It's a good start. Yeah, nice little Nice pounder. colored up. This is your spawning colors. You see how deep that red is? Just and that's, that's a small one for here. Yep, it, oh, very small. That's very small. Nice little guy, though. <laughs> when coming to the St. Mary's Rapids, safety is of the utmost importance. The water here is fast, turbulent, and the rocks are slippery. The first thing I recommend is a good wading staff. This is your third leg. My guide Brad insists that all his clients have some sort of third leg or wading staff. It can be anything from a stick to a uh, old ski pole or a nice wading staff like I have. The second thing is some sort of spike system on your boots or a good felt system. Don't come here with just rubber boots. I found out the hard way a couple of years ago when I fell in. So luckily I wasn't hurt and just my pride was bruised. So remember, Safety is of the utmost importance when you come to the Sioux Rapids. Sure. 
should walk this one. Yeah, I'm going to walk this one. Yep, that was a good one. Fish again behind rocks. That's what I've been doing. Now, what we're looking for is shadows. And the fact I have sunglasses on is a big, big help. You gotta have sunglasses. This is a big, long fish, Bill. Yeah, it's... Let his head drop back. There we go. It's a drop back, yeah. And uh, these fish are hiding behind rocks and they're feeding. These are drop back fish. They've already spawned. They're hiding behind the rocks, feeding. And they're, they're a little tough to get to sometimes. And you just gotta be pers persevere with it and cast after cast. There you go. Caught right, the net there. Right in the corner of the mouth there, Bill. Oh. Now, this is a spawned out hen. See how skinny the, the belly is? This fish was hiding behind a rock, feeding up, getting ready to go back out in the lake. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that fish. And away she goes. Oh, yeah. Nice fish, Bill. Woo! Super nice fish. You can only access the rapids from the Canadian side, and your first impression is the rapids appear quite intimidating. This is not the case, though. The St. Mary's River drains Lake Superior into Lake Huron, with the rapids only a minor two-thirds of a mile of its length by a one-quarter of a mile wide. The riverbed is bedrock, boulders, rubble, gravel, and sand, perfect spawning grounds for fish. The rapids are divided in two by a cement dike that runs its length. Inside the dike are quite weightable waters with pools, runs, and riffles. On the far side of the dike are the main rapids with many channels, rapids, and runs. There are also three large pools that hold a multitude of fish. The largest and most productive pool is the Canadian pool. The great thing about coming to Sault Ste. Marie is it's a drive to destination. I very much want to do this on a budget, so I've rented a room in a very nice, reasonably priced hotel, and I've hired a guide. Hiring a guide is important at least for a day in order to learn the access points and the best pools in the rapids. I now join John Giuliani for some August Atlantic salmon. The Atlantic salmon stocking program can most definitely be considered a success in the St. Mary's River. The Atlantic salmon program started in 1987, and since then, somewhere between 40 and 60,000 yearlings are released into the St. Mary's River each year. The adult return numbers have already been outstanding, with many fishermen reporting excellent catches. Regulations are not as strict in Ontario in regards to how you angle for them. You may use sinking lines, leaders, and weighted flies. There we go. Ooh, there we go. There we go. Nice fish. <laughs> Just a small one. Well, look oh, at, how high look at it the jumps. jumps of that. Good job, look at Bill. How high. <laughs> Good job, Bill. Now this this is something else. This <laughs> this is a small fish, but he's certainly certainly <laughs> giving a good account of himself. That line just hit the water. Just hit the water. Down it went. We're using a caddis emerger type of fly, the same that you would use trout fishing. Now. Some control, oh, yeah. It's just a little nice, guy, little nice girls, trip. but whoa. Oh, I think that's a big rainbow. Is it? Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a rainbow. Wow. Nice. That's what's nice about the St. Mary's. While you're fishing Atlantics, you always got the rainbows for a bonus. What? I've never seen a rainbow jump like that before, though. <laughs> In water this warm. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And this is a No, that is rainbow. an Atlantic. It is an Atlantic. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. It is a grills. <laughs> I, like I was going to say, I've never seen <laughs> a, a rainbow jump like that. I've seen Atlantics. Now, the, this is quite quite a, a tiny one. Yeah, I've never seen an Atlantic this small. That's what threw me off yeah. guard. But good job, Bill. That's an Thank Atlantic you. just the same. Yeah. And I'll get my line out of the way. As you can see, not real big, but did you see how far he jumped up in the air? What a thrill. OK, well, he's gone. And away he goes. Go on. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Well. 
<laughs> Slimy hand. <laughs> smell a skunk is off. <laughs> Good job. The smell a skunk is off. See the jumps on My that? My goodness, I wow. just can't get over how high he jumped. That had to go five feet in the air. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was nuts. The technique for today is a dead drift nymphing technique. It's important to keep the cast short and lift the line off the water and follow along with the rod tip at the same speed as the indicator is traveling. It's important to strike at anything that moves the indicator. It might be a rock or it could be the fish of a lifetime. Nymphing control is everything. And what do I mean by that? I gotta have a drag free drift with my indicator. That indicates my flies underneath are drag free. This is important. You gotta make it look like it's food. Otherwise the fish will reject it. How do I do that then? Well, I'm gonna cast upstream and I'm gonna lead with my tip to make sure I got a tight line coming down till the indicator is directly across from me. That's when I lift up and mend my line upstream and then I can run the rest of the drift and you'll have a drag free drift for probably 40 to 45 feet. The setup I have used at all times of the year in the St. Mary's Rapids is a typical nymphing setup using two flies. I used a floating line to a leader the same length as my rod, which was 11 feet. It was tapered down to an eight pound fluorocarbon tippet, then the first fly. At the bend of the first fly, I tied a length of 14 inches of eight pound fluorocarbon, and then the second fly. 14 inches above the first fly, I attached the minimum amount of split shot to take the flies to the bottom. The indicator placement was constantly adjusted to be one and a half to two times the depth of the water. Well, right now, John spotted a fish. Now we have a brim roll wall here, and we have two sections of the rapids. We have the inside section here, which is actually deeper than this side. And he spotted these fish. What I'm doing is I'm using the brim wall as, as a, a block so that they cannot see me. Hopefully I can take them. There you go. There we go. And Good there's job. a fish, yes. Good job. Way to go, Bill. Yep. Yep. That was a great take. Yep, and now I'm gonna try to get them away from these other fish. There you go, nice jump. Nice little silver, eh? Yeah, nice, nice Atlantic. I said, you hold that rod up real high because he's going to go nuts. And you got some rocks down there you got to watch. Yeah. This is something else. Well, as long as it's he's a little not unorthodox moving. fishing, but. But I mean, it was effective. So you have to be versatile. You cannot figure one way of doing things. If you do, you're okay. beat. We got him? Got him. All right. Fly well, popped out. I could feel it. Oh, he's still there. Just let go. Nice shot of him. Give us a smile, John. <laughs> this is what having a guide makes the difference in catching fish or not. Okay. Let's let him go. Okay. And away he went. <laughs> oh, he, he was uh, nice and nice and fresh. It's September and the fall run of pink salmon has begun. This is the time of year where the action can be non-stop. I join up with good friend and fishing buddy, John Babulik. These are John's home waters and he assures me we will have a great time. The most important thing to do is to try and get a drag free drift as possible. A lot of mending and focus on the tip of the line or the indicator, being as careful as possible that if there's even a hint of movement, for whatever reason, set. The, the best success comes when, when you think there may be a fish. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of a rock, you can pick up again and set, cast again. Concentrate on the Sick. line, that's it. Set. Fish on. Good man. <laughs> so what I did there, 
I mended over, mended over, mended over, made sure that I had good slack in the line, and when, when I saw even the tip of the line just make a slight curve, I set the hook. Oh, good hen. Another good hen. Boy, we've taken a good number of hens today. Just a nice little hen, fairly fresh. There we go, chartreuse cactus fly. Algoma country pink salmon. Love it. here in the Sioux are much larger than they are further up in the north. Why? I don't know, but they seem to be larger. And again, another male. And you gotta gain control of them. If you don't, they'll be in that fast water and gone on you. So believe it, they're, they're, they're small, but they, they, they really, really fight hard. Gain control. Get my net ready again. In you go there, buddy. One after the other in the St. Mary's Rapids. I get a big male. I'm applying side pressure. I think he's just about done. Sort of dwarfs mine, that's for sure. <laughs> Wowee, that's a big fish. That is a big, big pink. Can you get a hold of him? Yeah, I can get him. Dynamite. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Double header. Double header. You gotta like it coming to the Sioux. Wow. Beauty. Wowee. How fun is that? Yours, yours is absolutely <laughs> wonderfully, <laughs> wonderfully big. The way mine goes. The one thing I like about coming to the Sioux is how economical it can be. An eight hour drive from Toronto, Ontario and on the border with Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, makes flying unnecessary. Besides being a great fishing destination, it's just a nice place to be with friendly people, great places to eat, and places to just relax. Rod and reel selection when coming to the Sioux is very important. I don't recommend anything less than a seven weight uh, these fish here are large and powerful and will break anything that's lighter than that. Uh, the length of the rod, this is a nine foot number seven. I also have an 11 foot number seven that switch rod that I've been using with a lot of success. It's a great nymphing rod. Reels, large arbor. The large arbor is needed because these fish will run directly at you and you need the ability to pick up line quickly. Smooth drags. Now this is probably the most important. These fish will go for long runs. I had one go well into my backing yesterday. So a smooth drag is definitely needed. Otherwise you risk losing the fish and probably the fish of your life. The best places to find fish are in the current seams. A seam is where two currents of differing speed meet. Fish will lay in the slower of the two currents, but near the fast current. An easy way to determine where the seams are is to follow where the foam or the bubbles go. The flies that, that you must have when you come to Algoma country are a good solid selection of egg flies. I prefer chartreuse, pink, and orange as, as staple colors for egg patterns in a variety of shades. I often bring a selection of cactus flies with some sparkle color to them and a selection of smaller micro eggs for fussier fish. 
also, I bring along a good selection of large flies, big clouser minnows and bigger spay patterns in bright colors, preferably chartreuse and blue uh, and darker purple. A good selection of nymphs is also an important set of flies to have. I prefer hair's ear nymphs in olive and in the traditional tan color, along with woolly buggers and an assortment of small spay flies. Another good pink salmon. And I got another hen and it's another good hen. And another hand, but away she goes. And then John can go and fight his fish. <laughs> well, I might want you to slop this one into the net. It's a good oh, one. Oh, it's a good one, is it? Okay, I'll get my net. He got a great big tail on him, big powerful tail. I just don't want to bang him up against the rocks. Now look at that. We hope you enjoyed today's show and make Sault Ste. Marie your next vacation destination. It's truly a special place and you will come back year after year. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Algoma Country, That Real. Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Scientific Anglers, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net. To learn more about the new fly fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.